Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at learning how to play Starship Samurai by Plat Hat Games. It's a two to four player area control game. It plays in about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, it's a lot of fun, it's not too rules heavy, so I think you will very much like it. It reminds me a little bit of maybe a quicker version of Rising Sun if you're familiar with that game, but even if you're not, we're gonna take a look at how to play. So the first thing we see when we set the game up is that we've got a couple of different areas that are going to be important. First off is the alliance board, and this board is using uh, each player's area, depending on which color. If you're the blue player, you would be on this track, the green player would be on this track, etc., red player and gray player, to track the position of these neutral clans. And as you gain favor with them, they can move up on your track, or as somebody else gains favor, they can move down into potentially into somebody else's track. Over here we have the location boards and there are numbered one, two, three, and four. If you're playing with less than four players, you're not going to use all four. Uh, so you'll remove some of the location boards to match the number of players that you're playing. Also, if you're playing with less than four players, you'll remove some of the location cards that go into those. Uh, but the rule book will tell you which ones to remove. I'm setting this up for a four player game, so we'll be using the entire deck of location cards, which will get dealt out and go on to those different location boards. And, uh, and we'll talk about what those mean here momentarily. Additionally, we have player boards. And the player board is going to track the different orders or actions that you can take. Uh, and, and you're gonna do one of those at the start of your turn. Uh, and, and you'll do that for, you know, after you've, everybody's taken four actions that will complete a round. And the game will play over four rounds. Uh, you're also going to see that you've got uh, different fighters here and also a carrier. And you'll have the fighter and carrier ship cards to reference what they do. Um, each player is also going to start off with two uh, action cards. And these action cards are there are different types of action cards, but you're going to start off with these two specific ones. You should start off with one elite general and one change strategy. There's actually four of each of these cards, enough to give everybody else one. But if you have less than four players, you're not going to shuffle the unused ones back into the deck. They will be returned to the game box. The next thing you're going to notice that the game has also is eight amazingly detailed samurai mech uh, minier, miniatures. These things are just gorgeous. And there's a lot of them. And you're going to be drafting cards that go along with those. So, you know, yeah, this is great. So everybody, in addition to having your Starfleet, you're also going to have two giant Voltron-style robots to help you win the war and gain favor throughout the Empire. Um, on this alliance board here, you are going to notice that there are numbers going around the, uh, the outside, and that is the victory point or honor track. And so if a red player were to gain five victory points, that red player would track that by moving their token over. But everybody will start on the zero for the honor track. There is also money which is uh, wealth tokens, which are going to look like your standard type of supply crate. And we have a plenty of those. You want to keep those close to the game board, as well as the deck of action cards. And the action cards are going to be very, very helpful. There's two different types of action cards. There are order action cards, which you can play before or after you take an action or, an, or issue an order. Uh, and then there are also battle cards, which you can use one of these when we're getting ready to do battle. So. Let's talk about the player turn order because you're going to also have a first player token, which will, in this case, will assign to green, but you can randomly assign that. And you're going to notice you have four different order tokens, numbered one, two, three, and four. Now, the first thing that you might think is the, what do the value do these numbers mean? Do I have to do one first or is the, the number that I play going to have something to do with uh, with what's going to happen in you know the order, but no, these actually just value, reference the value of the actions. So the different actions that are available to players, so that they can move these allegiance tokens, which are going to gain you uh, honor and or wealth, uh, or you can move units, which is putting your units out on the board to gain control of these areas, which can also gain you things like honor, victory points, or wealth. Uh, you can. Uh, gain some uh, draw, draw cards, which were, you know, how you get more cards, which is a great way to get cards because there's really only two ways to get cards in this game. One is through the draw cards action, and then the other is through cards like this one here that you're going to start off with, which is called change strategy, which can let you get one, but only during battle. Um, and then gain wealth, which will let you gain wealth tokens. So if I were to play a four on gain wealth, I would 
take four wealth tokens from the supply and put them into my area. Uh, and if I wanted to, on a later turn, uh, play three uh, and um, gain wealth, I would take three more. So you can actually do the same order multiple times in a row. You just have to do one order each time. Now, before you actually start the gameplay, you are going to draft Samurai and it just will start in player order. The first player will choose one in secret and set it down and then pass to the left and each player will take one. Once the final player gets theirs, they will immediately draft a second Samurai and then pass back in the opposite direction. So this is sometimes called a snake draft. And so whoever basically gets the first pick for their first Samurai also gets the last pick for their second Samurai. So once you have everybody has chosen their Samurai cards, those will go under here and they're all different and they have all different strengths. So I'm gonna, let's take a closer look at some of these cards. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the fighter ship, which is your basic ship. You're gonna have eight of these in your unit supply. And when you put one of these out there, the first thing you're gonna notice is that this little triangle in the top left means a one. That means that it has a strength of one. So when you're comparing army strength uh, against somebody else, your, each fighter ship is going to count as one. But they do have a special ability. As a free order, you may attach a wealth uh, to a fighter ship you control, a fighter ship gains one strength for each wealth attached to it. So you can actually deploy your fighters and make them a little bit stronger if you would like to do that. Um, and that's, that's actually going to be important when it comes to deploying mechs. Because if you can't put a fighter or a carrier anywhere on the board, if all the places are occupied, then you just can't put them there. Uh, the only one that can go into places where they're, they're full are, are the mechs, and they would, when they do that, they will crush the, the weakest ship. So by powering up a fighter, you're less likely to get crushed by a mech. Next, I want to take a look at the carrier ship. Now, you only have one carrier ship, but if you'll notice, your carrier ship has a strength of two, which means it is twice as strong as a fighter ship. Now, the carrier ship has a special ability. It says, before moving a carrier ship, you may choose up to two small ships you control that share a location with or are in the supply with the carrier. So if I if I put a one on move units, I can move my carrier ship somewhere, and uh, but I'll be able to move two small ships with him at the same time. Uh, now if he is already out somewhere and I wanted to move him from one place to another place, uh, they would have to already be in his location. So they may have to be basically be aboard the carrier pretty much. Um, but it's nice because for one of the move, you get to move three. So carrier is a nice way to get a lot of strength in a place very, very quickly. Uh, now, for these two particular mechs that we have, now all the mechs are different, right? So we have Shinjin here, which only has a, a value of two. But what Shinjin's special ability is, every ship you control gains one strength while at Shinjin's location. So if Shinjin goes somewhere, every other ship is counts as m even more strong which is fantastic. Now keep in mind that only the fighter ships and carrier ships are considered ships. Your samurais are not considered ships, but they are considered units. So when something talks about a unit, it can be any one of the three types. If it's talking about ships, it can only be fighters or carriers. But now we have Gozen over here, who's a strength of four. And Gozen says, while Gozen is in a battle, your opponents must commit and reveal their battle cards before you choose yours. Battle cards are still resolved in turn order. That will make more sense once we understand how battle cards work. But this is a, it's a it's a tactical advantage, and then you basically you get to see the poker hand of your of your opponent before they they do. And all of these guys have something different. So uh, we have Mori here, who is uh, power three and or strength of three. And after moving Mori from your supply to a location, you may discard a card from your hand or destroy up to two ships at Mori's new location. You know, that he can destroy ships. And, and they all do different things. Uh, one that I used recently, which I thought was really interesting, was Masamune, who is the strongest at strength six. But whenever you move Masamune, you must spend one wealth. So he's expensive to fly around, but he's ex extremely strong. So they all have a different value and strength, and it makes more sense to learn the rules of the game completely before trying to look at the samurai. So if you're playing this with new players, make sure you teach uh, them or have them run through the rules before they try to understand what is best. After you, everybody has draft, they will go ahead and try to find their samurai mech that goes along to each one and put those uh, in their unit supply as well. 
So starting with the green player, we could actually begin the game at this point, and the first thing that they're going to do is decide to pick an order token and place it on one of these. Now, if you have wealth, you can actually increase the value of X. So uh, let's talk about the different orders that we can take. First one we can take is called Move Allegiance, and it says move one clan marker up to X spaces. And now that's important because we need to talk about clan markers. So let's say X was two for some value, you know, for this value, and we were going to move a clan marker up to two spaces. And now the green player is gonna track this on the alliance board because the green symbol is right here. And all of these different little tokens down here represent minor clans in the empire, and gaining favor with them is great because it's gonna give us all kinds of extra benefits. So the first thing we wanna do is we can go ahead and gain favor with, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll choose this blue clan here. And by this is a neutral position down here at the bottom. So by gaining two favor with them, we can move them one point onto our track and then one point higher. Now this means they're at this level, which can potentially gain us one honor or victory point. In this game, victory points are honor and honor are victory points. That being said, uh, if somebody else were to gain favor with that same clan, it would move towards them and away from me. So down one if they gained one favor. So if, if the game were set up as such, and I was the green player and I went to gain two favor with this clan here, um, they would move away from red, one, two, and closer to me. If I was to gain four favor with them, they would go one, two, three, four. So anytime you gain favor, they move closer to you and away from your opponents. And that's the simplest way to explain how those work. Um, so moving allegiance is important uh, because that's one way for us to gain wealth and lots of victory points. And you can have multiple uh, different clans on your track, which is definitely an advisable way to start stacking victory points. The next thing you can do is you can move units. You can move X number of units. Uh, and now units can be moved from your supply out to an empty space on one of the boards, on the location boards, or you can move units from a location board to another location board. So I might want to put a three down for move units and move one, two, and then I'll move my carrier and he gets two free moves as well. And now I'm spreading out some control over location two and some location, some control over location one. And that's going to be helpful to me because at the start of my turn, uh, if, I've, if I have dominance in any one of these areas, if I have the most strength, I'm also going to be able to claim those rewards. So in the case of Jensei, if this was the start of my turn and I already had the most, got, most strength here, I would be able to gain one favor with this faction and then also one wealth. So having that is very important uh, because you're gonna, there's going to be four, you know, we're just going to take four turns in a round. So that much is nice. Now, the problem is you, when you do that and then you're finished, now the second player can go and the second player might decide, you know what, I'm going to put a four for move units and I'm going to have more guys than you. So I'll go one, two, three, and then four, I'll put my carrier with two of my guys. And now we'd be tied here, so nobody would get the benefit, but blue would now have the advantage on the location number two, Bakad City. So, or, or rather, Biyako City. But, uh, and so, you know, going first has some advantages, but it also has some disadvantages. Now, the first player token is going to shift to the next player in line for each of the rounds, so everybody will get a chance to be first player, everybody will get a chance to be last player, so that much is going to be helpful. Uh, the next action you have available is draw cards. Well, you can draw cards. Now, you do have a maximum hand limit of five cards, so you may not want to draw too many cards right away, especially considering um, you have one that can get you more cards already, and that's called Change Strategy. Um, so we're going to talk about that also after I finish the rest of these. And then the last one is Gain Wealth, and that one is pretty straightforward. You gain up to X Wealth tokens. Anytime you do play an order, you can put one Wealth or as many wealth as you want uh, to boost that up. So if I have already used my two, three, and four, and I only have left is my one, but I need to move units, I can sp spend maybe four wealth with my one and increase it up to five, and then I will be able to move five units uh, by using that one. But the four is definitely the most valuable. That being said, let's talk about these different cards that we've got. So 
There are two types of cards, as I talked about. You, everybody's going to start with two that are battle cards, because after everybody's taken all four turns, we're going to go into battle mode. But before I do that, I want to talk about the order cards, because there is a couple different types of them, and I'm going to show you some here. There are some or some cards have a cost, and that means you have to pay that cost in order to play them. Now, you can play one and only one order card uh, before or after you actually issue an order. So if I don't have any money, I might want to take an order to gain some money, and then I can immediately play this card afterwards. And this would let me use move units from my graveyard uh, to the supply, and then move up to two more units. So this gets basically dead units out of the graveyard. And the graveyard is a place for, if this place were filled up, and then somebody put a guy here, it would, or a samurai mech, it would send my unit that I killed to the graveyard, and he's gonna be unavailable for the rest of this round. And if that happens to a lot of my guys, I might wanna use something like War Factory to get them back out there. However, at the end of the round, they will come back into the supply, so it's not like they're gone for the whole game. That being said, uh, that's basically how order cards work. It, you don't have to play one, but if you do play one, it's going to go to a discard pile, and it can be before or after you take your order. Um, if you ever run out of action cards, then you are going to shuffle the discard pile and create a new deck. Uh, and there can be all sorts of different costs, like two money or sacrifice two ships. And some, some, some cards even cost honor, and you have to be able to play that. Now, when it comes to battle cards, I think this is a great time to talk about battle. So one of the things we're going to do after everybody's taken all four of their turns is we're going to go ahead and do the resolution for these battles. So one of the things that's going to happen is we're going to start with location number one, and everybody is going to determine how much strength they have. And then in player turn order, players can play a battle card face down. And then once everybody has decided to commit or to not commit a battle card, then they will be flipped over in also in player turn order. Now, one of the things that's great is that, you know, you have the two cards you're going to start with kind of demonstrate the two different ways that battle cards can work. Uh, for example, you have Elite General, which just gives you three more strength. But this once it's used, it's gone. Now, it's nice to be able to have three more strength because in this case, if the red player uh, were to play that, that would bring them up to four. And that would make them win because you have two, three, four, two, three, well, it would leave it at least tie. And then if in case of a tie, it's going to go to whoever went first in the turn order. So if red player was the first player, then that would be enough for them to win. That being said, there's also a change strategy card that you're starting off with. And what this does is it lets you gain a money or draw an action card. And then you put this card back in your hand. So this is one of those cards that you can, it's almost a bluff card. First off, it's nice to be able to use to just gain money. Uh, or gain an extra action card if you're if you don't have five But by you putting a card face down, we don't know what it is So it might be that you're playing a really strong card and there are some really really strong cards uh, In this in this deck. There's one that can kill uh, any other mech in in the game and uh, I just had somebody use that against me when I was using Massa Moon who was that six strength mech and so I thought I had a location locked in and somebody was able to kill him. So there's all kinds of different battle cards that are able to add strength. Sometimes they're conditional. Sometimes they let you move ships. So you could say, oh, you know what? All right, well, fine. I'm No, I'm not going to win this one. So I'm moving over here instead. So you can maybe try and sal you know, salvage your losses or, or maybe pull extra units from some other place to help you gain an advantage. Uh, so that's the way battle cards will work, and they will resolve in player order. So if player one goes first and he has something that's going to kill someone else, uh, then that's going to happen before the next player's card resolves. And only the players that are in the battle are going to commit cards. So in this case, it's the green, the blue, and the red player. Uh, the gray player does not have any units in that battle, so they would not uh, you know, be a part of it. They would not be playing any cards. Notice I say he a lot, and uh, the funny thing is, I'm going to mention that, is, is that the rule book actually uses the pronoun she all the time in this rule book. There's nothing wrong with that, but in case you are reading the rule book, and if you get curious, because not many rule books will exclusively use the term she, uh, the rule book does say that. Not like it's a big deal, it doesn't matter to me, and I actually think it's kind of humorous because it's causing me to re-examine the way that I look at pronouns. And every time I look at the rule book, it, you know, it'll catch me off guard from time to time. That being said, um, 
one of the things that is going to be tricky about this is that when you have a lot of mechs out here, they all are just gray and it can become difficult to know whose is whose. So one thing that really would be great uh, is if they had come with the little like rings, sometimes they have a, a little sleeve that you can kind of put your mech in that it would have a green outline around it. Um, you wouldn't want to paint it green though because it might be drafted by a different colored player next game, so the colors are not static, they're only for the one game. So uh, after you resolve this, the winner, whoever had the most force at the end, the ties would go to whoever was first in player turn order, would actually take this card and they would gain five victory points. Uh, you're also going to gain you know, uh, this card's symbol up here, which is a single little diamond. Every location has a different number of diamonds, so Bayako City has two diamonds. Uh, and we actually pulled one of each. Umi Castle has three diamonds. And then the uh, Sirio Halo Colonies have four diamonds. Now, it's very advantageous to be able to get one of each because there are four different uh, categories in the deck. And if you are able to get one of each of them, you're going to get a bunch of extra bonus. You'll get nine extra bonus uh, honor or victory points at the end of the game. And if you have only three, you'll get six extra bonus points. And if you have only two, you'll get three. And if you have only one or less, you get no extra victory points. But winning one does get you five victory points right away and that card. So once a battle is over and let's say the green player has won, uh, the green player would then take all of their units, put them back to the supply. Whoever did not win is actually going to stay on the board. So there is actually an advantage for coming in second place because that means you're going to have the most strength here on the next go around, on the next round. And so in the case of the blue player, when they first start, once we deal out new cards, they're going to gain those location rewards at the beginning of each of their turns. So if the next one was this one, uh, the Bazoor Ring, well, look, that's two faction uh, with this particular clan. So the blue player would now be able to gain two faction with that clan. And that's a really nice thing. So uh, so it, you know, being second place uh, is not so bad. Uh, and then you'll move on to the second one and you'll resolve that. The winner will take that card. You'll resolve three and four. If nobody is at a location, you still remove the card. If, uh, if, if only one person is at a location, you don't have a battle, you don't commit battle cards, that person just automatically wins. Winners will always return all their stuff to the supply. So at the end of the round, once all of them, all of these locations are gone, you're going to go to the resolution phase, which the first thing is you're going to do is gain rewards for alliances. So if you'll notice, we've been pushing these things up. I, I set some up right at this point, and this is just the position in the favor of all the different clans with respect to each player. So we'll start with the black player. The black player will gain one honor. Uh, and they will move that up because one honor for this particular symbol. The red player has somebody here, so they will gain two honors. The red player will gain, you know, two more honor. Uh, the green player has will gain one wealth, so they gain one money token, and then they're going to gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight honor total. And you can have multiples. So in theory, if you had all th you know three stacked on the top one that would be 15 honor which would be really nice it would make you a target for everybody else because people can try to pull the, the loyalty away from you uh, so green would gain quite a bit and then blue would gain only one honor for having just the one and then this uh, pink clan here remains un uh, unloyalty to anybody so that's what you would do there the next thing you would do is you would reveal your new locations so you would deal out four new cards let me get rid of these and you deal out four new cards and we would get ready to play the next round. And once there are no more cards, that's going to end the game, but there are 16, so that's exactly enough for four rounds. If you are playing with less players, though, uh, you, you will use the, if once there are no more cards, then you will go ahead and end the game immediately and we will do that. Next thing you're going to do, though, at the start of the next round is restore units and orders. So you're going to take all your orders that you have put down on into your orders section. Uh, put them back up into your order pool so everybody should have a one, two, three, and a four available again to them for the next round. And then pass the first player token as well as pulling all of your units from the graveyard back into your unit supply. Uh, so that will happen. And the only units that you'll have left out on the board are the units that were you put at locations that you did not win. And lastly, at the end of the game, uh, it's going to be the player who has the most honor along the track that is the winner. In the case of a tie, it will revert to the player who has the most wealth. 
If there is still a tie, it's going to be whoever won the most location cards. And if it's still a tie, after that, it'll be the player with the most clan markers along their branch. In the event that all of those are still tied, it will be to the player who went first or earliest in that final round. So that's the ultimate tiebreaker because you can't be a tie on that one. So overall, I really like Starship Samurai. I think it's a very cool area control game, and I think one of the things I like most about it is that it's so compact and can play so quickly. Usually a game like this will take a lot longer than an hour to an hour and a half, so I really appreciate how much value is packed into the time, uh, and the setup isn't that bad either, so I think it's a great quick game that you can really get that area control kick if you've been hankering for it just a little bit. Uh, I do liken it a little bit to Rising Sun, uh, but Rising Sun is definitely more of a longer play game, like three hours or more, depending on how many players you have. So if you're looking for a deeper game, you know, then maybe you look somewhere else. But if you're looking for maybe a good gateway game or to introduce people to, it's not too heavy. It's pretty light. Uh, has some gorgeous looking miniatures and uh, has you know some great looking artwork on all of the cards this is a great game for what it gives you and I really really like it uh, one of the things that I would say that my my really only critical feedback is that it can be a little bit tricky to tell which mechs belong to which player when they're all on the playboard. I really would have liked if they would have given you some type of ring to put around the base of the miniature uh, for you know for for each color. Each color should have two of them. This way you can easily indicate, oh well, this giant mech here, that's one of mine. So you when you can look at a location and see, oh, this one's contested by everybody, or this one is just all one player. Because it can get a little confusing in a four-player game when you have all the mechs on the board and not being able to tell who's who at a glance. If you are somebody who likes to paint miniatures, there's definitely something to be said for painting these. First off, they're gorgeously sculpted, so there is definitely that. But it will also help kind of identify the mechs based on their artwork since they all do have uh, painted art. You know, they have colors on their picture so you could identify them a little bit easier that way but still a ring representing the player color would be the best way to go in my opinion but definitely like this game if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think down in the comments below if you have any questions uh, go ahead and ask them I'll do my best to go ahead and answer them and if you want to see more make sure you are uh, hit subscribe and click that little bell for alerts I do have a giveaway going on right now if you're interested in X-Wing I am giving away three X-Wing 2.0 conversion kits in the form of cool stuff gift cards so you can use those for that or for a gaming expansion of your choice or for whatever you want and all it takes to enter to win one of those is to become a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Uh, I will be announcing the winners to those before Gen Con, so uh, towards the end of July. So you make sure you check out my future videos to see if you won. All it takes to enter is just to become a subscriber and leave a comment. It's as simple as that. And I do similar giveaways all the time. I also have other giveaways going on on my Patreon, which I'll link down in the description below. And if you would like, you can also check out Crabbox.com for more Star Wars gaming specific news for games like Armada, Legion, and X-Wing. Uh, check it out if you'd like. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.